This living room is what sold me on this 1929 Spanish duplex. It is the main reason I purchased this home and I actually got started on it a few months back and then transitioned my way into the kitchen and then into the movie room. We did find a layout of furniture in this space, got a couple of decor elements in it as well and also hung a light fixture, headed to Ikea and got a couple of Billy bookcases to create a DIY built-in bookshelf wall that's going to be a focal point of the living room and this week we're making our way back to the space. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are in the living room right now. Still mismatched wall colors in here, but hopefully those will be fixed very soon. We're kind of making our way back upstairs from the movie room, which if you guys have not yet seen that makeover, it was a three-part series here on the channel where we made over a former, more formal dining room into a really cute kind of moody movie theater cinema room, if you will. Now I'm gonna go right into our thumbnail and title right off the bat this video because you guys probably saw it and that is the stained glass window is damaged like as you can see here it is it's damaged and let me just give you a little bit of a story time on what happened and when this happened I could not believe my eyes you guys I actually was not even going to tell anyone that this happened I wasn't gonna tell the Lone Fox family I felt so bad myself that I that it broke under like my control you know like it was my stained glass window that I ended up buying from an old home and I broke it which I just felt so bad about but also it like was a freak accident so let me kind of tell you guys what happened so as you know if you have not already seen the stained glass window did fall one time I literally leaned it up against the opening of the door frame a gust of wind blew through it blew the stained glass window it fell over but it was perfectly fine nothing happened which I was so so grateful for in the video and I could not believe that I caught that on camera my <gasps> But after having them sitting in the dining room for about four months, I was like, let's actually hire someone to install these doors. I wanna bring them back in the room, kind of get an idea for what they looked like. So Justin and I actually ended up putting the stained glass doors just in front of the current ones, just kind of leading them there. And they were there for maybe like a day or two. If you haven't heard about it in LA, we've been having crazy, crazy weather lately. And somehow my double doors up here swung open during the midst of the storm and the doors completely like launched right off the wall and I was in my room it was probably like 9 p.m. and I heard something and I was like what was that I could not believe it I walked out and I just saw the stained glass doors on the ground one of them was perfectly fine and then one of them broke in this spot here like the wood piece actually broke really bad and then also it like a panel at the bottom also broke out so there was three kind of shattered glass panels and I was so sad you guys like I was so so sad I didn't know what to do I actually ended up reaching out to a couple of different stained glass repair companies to see if they can maybe custom make the glass if they'd be able to fix the frame whatever it might be I was quoted over $4,800 to fix this on the stained glass window and I just could not do it I bought these windows for under a thousand for both of them which I thought was a pretty good deal and I was just not at all about to spend five thousand dollars to fix this little piece of glass here so this glass actually has a very unique texture if you could see that as I'm kind of um, shining that in the light which is what I was most worried about because I wanted the texture to be emulated same as the original like I did not want it to look different at all but I ended up doing a little bit of research and I headed to a glass supply store in Pasadena which is actually the same area I bought these windows in and let me share with you guys what I found. So we've come to this place called Stained Glass Supplies and it's actually pretty far in the back of Pasadena. So it took a minute to get here, but it seems like a place that might have the supplies we need to fix the window. I'm not right. mad at that. Okay, you need a big piece of it? No, it's this is the, it just goes into a corner. Oh my gosh, oh, is that the okay. same exact size? <laughs> it might be. It's, it's, yeah, it's... Yeah, this is the same. This is the one I showed you. It's just the bigger. This is where it comes from. Look guys how perfect this looks. I cannot believe we found something so similar. It even has like the actual kind of darker amber tones that are also in here as well. So I think this will be perfect. And there's a pretty large sheet where we can get four cuts out of here.
this is the piece that kind of came out of the center. So as you can see here, I'm assuming they actually molded or added the trim pieces on top um, after they added in the center section. So what I'm going to have to do is kind of maneuver this into place first, which is gonna take me a second to get it into the proper spot. Add some wood glue, we're gonna add it all around and clamp it, and probably even maybe a couple brad nails just so it's nice and secure. Clamped and it's gluing. Now we wait. Five thousand dollars for the repair? Absolutely not. Anyways, I was thinking of a project that we can work on today, and it's the mantle. I don't love this mantle, and let me reframe the camera so I can share with you what I don't love about it. This fireplace has original batch elder tile, which I love. It's my favorite feature of this entire fireplace, but I don't love this additional, I guess, molding that they added. I kind of want to just bring it back to something a bit more simplistic. I feel like this adds almost like a European, like French look to the mantle, whereas I think the one downstairs is actually more original. So I want to kind of bring this back to just more of like a shelf, like something super simple, take off the decorative mold and all of these curvatures uh, and we'll see if it works. So this actually wasn't just a molding piece added on top, which I thought it was going to be just a simple molding piece added on top of like the original mantle, but it looks like the whole original mantle might have been completely taken off. I just don't think this is original. Something about like just these nails. This is like from a nail gun, you know, like this is not <laughs> an old nail. What does it say? Number two out of 10. This handwriting does not look like 1929 handwriting. <laughs> what if it didn't have it might not have had a mantle oh it probably didn't because look you can see like it, the, it definitely it didn't the, the curve fall or the angle falls down this mantle used to be red this mantle used to be green this mantle used to be white this is giving petrified wood is that like golden yellow It is the morning of the next day and these clamps have been sitting overnight. It feels pretty secure. I did go ahead and kind of like give it a good shake. It feels nice and secure. So I'm gonna remove our clamps. That is remounted in there. So now we could essentially put the glass on the backside. As you could see, there actually was a panel in the bottom left corner that ended up just cracking. So I had to cut out all of the window glazing and chip all that away. That way we were able to properly remove that piece of glass. I'm also gonna keep all these glass pieces cause maybe I can use them in the future on like a DIY mosaic or something like that. So once all of those pieces were chipped away, I started inserting the glass pieces and they were cut just a little bit too large. So I actually just used a razor blade to shave down the wood just enough so that our glass would pop in the frame. And I I find it should just be a lot easier than whipping out a power tool. The razor blade worked perfectly. So out of all of these panels, these are the two that we just replaced. So as you can see, um, the other ones around here, it actually matches up really great, which I'm happy. Like I'm happy that there's some similar ones. This one kind of looks the same here. We have a lighter option there. Now, of course, this one looks nice and thin because we haven't done the glazing yet, which is going to be the next step. And the product that I'm actually going to be using to glaze these windows is the DAP 33 window glazing. And this is actually kind of like a clay-like material. It's kind of thick. Uh, it's not 
not sticky and you actually mold this and form it into the edges here then we're going to smooth it to kind of this uh, 45 degree angle to get it looking similar to the rest of the door This was my first time glazing a window and it actually is pretty simple. You kind of just use it as Play-Doh or clay as if you're molding something and just fill in the crack with it. I used an actual molding tool. I picked up all the products on Amazon. I think that this window honestly cost me under $120 to repair myself, including the glass, all of the glazing materials, and even that little tool that I'm using there. So you just press the glazing material into the crevice where you want to ensure that your glass is going to stay. And then at a 45 degree angle, just scrape away any of the excess using a scraper tool like what I was using there or if you have a razor blade or something I'm sure that would work as well but the cleaner of a 45 degree angle you can get the more professional and inset the glass actually looks in the door Another gloomy day in Los Angeles. We have rain in the background, so if you guys can hear anything, that is what you might be hearing. But I uh, went ahead and glazed the window this morning, and it's currently just curing back here, laying flat on the ground. It is never being leaned up again until it's being installed. Trust me, I'm never putting that up on the wall again. Still have to actually find somebody to install the window because that was kind of the reason I ended up transferring down to the movie room, if you guys remember, because I was finding someone to install the actual doors, and then one of them shattered before I was even able to locate or find someone to properly do it. So once these are cured, which actually does take about seven to 14 days for them to cure, then we're going to be able to have them installed in the framework. But right in front of me, you guys can see that we have the fireplace. Here is our fireplace in its original state. This is how I bought the house, what it was looking like when I purchased it. I ended up ripping off part of it, as you guys saw in this video, and I revealed that there probably was no mantle under this. So we ended up photoshopping a version with kind of a chunkier mantle just to get an idea for what this would look like. And I do love the way that this looks, but I also wanted to photoshop no mantle, and I am honestly obsessed with no mantle. Something about this is just really, really interesting to me. was an addition. It was painted and plastered um, to the original state looking like this, so it would have all been one solid color. The mantle was added. We're probably thinking maybe like 40s or 50s. It just didn't seem right. It wasn't the right aesthetic for this fireplace. Wait, what? Horse hair? Yeah. They mix it in with the plaster. I had no idea. Justin said, oh, you can see the horse hair in there. I was like, what? He said they used to mix horse hair into plaster to make it stronger. Look as well, you guys, you could see some of the other colors. Like it's been painted a light blue. It's been painted baby pink. It's been painted purple. Like this room has been painted a variety of shades. The fireplace has been green. It's been red. It's been white before. Like this whole entire fireplace has gone through quite a bit. But don't worry, Miss Girl, we are bringing you right back to your original state. <laughs> So bringing this fireplace back, we are going to be needing to fill in any of the previous holes from the mantle. So I'm using some joint compound to just fill in these holes to start. This is kind of like my first layer of plaster because I'm adding it to the large holes and I'm also adding some plaster to the edge of that mantle where the layers of paint have been built up. That way we can kind of start creating a bit more of a transition between what was underneath the mantle and the painted layers above and below the mantle.
Good morning. We have the fireplace looking like this at the moment, which I'm still loving it. But I will say, I did a little Instagram poll yesterday, you guys, to ask your opinions, which if you don't follow on Instagram, it's just Lone Fox Home. And I love asking your opinions over on polls. And I just find Instagram to be an easier place for like quick chatting with you. So um, I ended up adding a poll and I was actually pretty surprised with the outcome. So I did three different options. We did first one, which is original mantle. Then we have the one with the chunkier mantle. And then we have the one with no mantle. And the results actually ended up being 2,100 people said, leave what you have, which was the before. Um, 20,100 said chunky plastered mantle and then 12,266 said no mantle and I kind of was leaning towards the chunky plastered mantle as well until we ended up removing the mantle that was here and we realized that there actually used to be no mantle on this fireplace like the original look and the original silhouette of this fireplace actually had zero mantle and I'm really interested in bringing it back to that look because I do feel like we're gonna have so many surfaces in this living room to style as we are doing the entire bookshelf wall on that back wall, there's going to be those stained glass windows, furniture throughout. We even have like an arched bookshelf over here that's built into the wall. So there's a lot of areas to set things. So honestly, I kind of feel like this acts as a little bit of a fireplace mantle in a sense, but it's just enough difference from your traditional fireplace where I feel like this is kind of interesting and I want to see how this is going to look in the living room. I feel like it also brings back kind of this... Spanish colonial feel to the house, which I love, um, and it's kind of authentic to the construction and architecture as well. So we're gonna add a second coat of our plaster on top and just kind of start getting the texture of this back to how it is on the top and bottom. For the second coat, I'm basically just applying a coat all over the top and we're doing an excess of plaster because I want to be able to go in and sand away a bunch as opposed to having to consistently add more. I feel like that's going to give us a look that we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding the second coat over the top of the previously dried coat and I didn't do any sanding beforehand. down here. Something I still need to do for this room, which you guys know I've kind of had a little bit of a struggle with, is selecting a paint color because I went through and did a couple different lime wash colors in this room and now I'm just mixing the lime wash in general. I'm just going to do a actual paint on the walls and I have my Farrow and Ball samples here and I also have some Sherwin-Williams samples as well. I'm kind of leaning more towards kind of like a tannish. I do want to keep the color in here light, but I still want it to look intentional like i don't want it to feel like i slapped an off-white on the walls or just kind of selected a safe color like i still want it to feel light but i want it to have like a little bit of pigment to it if that makes sense so i'm kind of like in these shades almost like more of a saturated off-white so i really am leaning towards the stirabao it's one of my favorite ones and i've been going back to it more and more i think these are might be just a little too gray probably I mean, something even like this, just like a tiny bit darker. When somebody comes over and asks what color I'm painting this, I always reference this plate right here. I love the color of this plate. It's like a bisque, kind of like creamy taupe color. I feel like it is actually very similar to Stir About, if you can see. It might be a little lighter. I'm going to bring this with me as a little inspo um, color swatch so I can kind of test out some colors. At Farrow and Ball, checking out the colors. They have so many. I've actually never been to this store. This one is on La Cienega, I believe. But I'm thinking Old White, Off White, Shadow White, and Stir About. That's the last one. So, yep, yeah, gonna get those colors and we will see.
look at this cabinet from 1858. I love the hand-painted detail. This first one is off-white. Oh, that's like the same color as the wall. This one is old white. And last but not least, we have shadow white. And then here's kind of a good example of that color against a stark white. As you could see, it's not green. Like, it looks green in some lighting, um, but it definitely has a green tone to it. It's just kind of like a taupey very light mushroomy color. These three right here just look so light already. I really wanna take this room to like a mid-toned, like medium-toned shade. Honestly, something like that I feel like is very pretty. This is what the old white color looks like with the fireplace, and I think it's really, really pretty as well. Let's see kind of that. See that tone? But just imagine it everywhere, like on absolutely all of the walls. Was just editing together this video and forgot to add in an outro. So I wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching this one. I love that we are making our way into the living room again. This is the reason I bought the house. As you guys know, the cathedral ceiling in here is what sold me. So I'm very, very excited to start getting some paint on the walls in here. We also do have a fireplace with no mantle at the moment, which I'm loving the direction of. It's right in front of me. I'm going to get to sanding down the plaster today. Then we're probably gonna start painting this room maybe this evening or tomorrow. So we are making great progress in here. I'm also so excited about the built-in bookshelves. I do think we could actually paint a majority of this room, just not do the bookcases before the doors are in. We still have quite a bit to do in here, so I will catch you guys in the next one where we're gonna be making more progress in the living room. Bye, guys.